Welcome to The Authority File, the podcast where you'll hear conversations with academic librarians, technologists, researchers, and authors whose work is laying the foundation for higher education's future. I'm Bill Mickey, your host and the editorial director at Choice. In this four-part series, which is brought to you with support from APA Style, publisher of the publication manual of the American Psychological Association, my guests and I will be demystifying APA Style. Joining me are Chelsea Lee and Timothy McAdoo. Chelsea is instructional lead at APA Style and Timothy is manager. Chelsea and Timothy are on hand to address some of the most frequently asked questions about the formats and guidelines of APA Style, including everyone's favorite, references. They'll also debunk myths, address some of the more unique reference sources, generative AI, anyone? And since APA style isn't just about references, we'll also learn about their bias-free language guidelines, communicating with visuals, and accessibility. In this final episode of our four-part series, Chelsea and Tim discuss some of the newer topics that have arisen in the last couple of years, how updates make it into a new edition of the publication manual, and how community feedback is collected and acted on. Okay, so can you give us a sense of uh, what new topics have arisen in the last couple of years, you know, since even even since uh, the seventh edition came out? So uh, inclusive language, bias-free language continues to be uh, an important topic. Mm -hmm. So something to consider here is that the APA style manual only gets updated to a new edition like every seven to 10 years. and Language moves a lot faster than that. So, sure so you like you have to deal with that. And mm -hmm. so uh, an important publication APA makes is called the Inclusive Language Guidelines. And it's published by APA's Equity, Diversity, and Inclusion Office. And that was published in 2021. And it's uh, like a glossary of every term you could think of. And sometimes you didn't even know to think of about uh, various topics and gives information on like, this is why this is a good term and you should use it, or this is why this term is not so good anymore and you should avoid it. And the EDI team is working on a revision to the inclusive language guidelines that is slated to come out this fall. So in that, we're excited to see. Good. And another thing on the horizon is a new journal article reporting standard. Uh, so journal article reporting standards are for people who did research and now they're reporting the research. And so the new standard is for helping promote equity, diversity, and inclusion justice in the description of scientific theories, methods, analyses, and conclusions. Um, and there's a working group who is developing that standard. And we're also looking forward to its release, hopefully later this year. All right. Fantastic. I have a, another uh, sort of recent question uh, is uh, how to cite TikTok and you know, TikTok videos. Oh, and, nice. uh, okay. Yeah. And um, I'm happy to say like, that it's, it's really addressed in uh, the existing template for social media that's in the publication manual. So there's not an example in there, but you can follow the author date title source from that template. And uh, there are examples on our website. Yeah. Whenever a new like kind of thing to, to cite happens, like there's always a sense of relief when you've, when you see <laughs> that the system that we have can accommodate it. It still covers yeah. it. Yeah. <laughs> I can imagine. Yeah. Speaking of that, like how I'm really curious to, to hear more about how, you know, look, getting a little peek behind the scenes and talking about how the team at APA style determines what changes to make to the style guide, you know, how, how does that all evolve into a new edition or into, um, you know, the supplements that come out in the intervening years. Yeah. Um, so we get feedback and suggestions and questions from, from lots of different people, which is really great because it lets us see the perspective of a student and an instructor and a librarian all asking the same kind of question, but from different angles. And we can see, um, Sometimes we can use that as a starting point to do more research and see like, well, there's an unintended consequence if we'd made that change. So mm. um, it's it's really nice to see um, the questions that come in. We 
carefully, we document the questions and we tag them for like what the topics are. And then when we start to see a trend as a team, we talk about like, well, is this something we can address now on the blog, on, on the website, or is it something we should, you know, make note of, continue to research and consider for future editions. Um, but really it's like the, sometimes it's suggestions, but really the, seeing the, the questions that come in um, give us the real insight into like, well, we, we thought we explained this, but it's something that people keep um, stumbling over. So, you know, we need to explain it better. Yeah. Super relevant here that it's like, it's not just me and Tim sitting in a room deciding. <laughs> yeah. Like we're, we're really trying to listen. We're trying to listen to as many people as we can listen to figure out what what needs to happen and like i was mentioning earlier there's so many different people whose views are are relevant you know you have the students and the librarians and the professors and like we were developing guidance on how to cite legal documents and like i was corresponding with lawyers because i was like tell me about being a lawyer and how you cite stuff because there's a whole different way to do it in in mm -hmm. the legal context and so i'm like this context of writing about psychology sometimes overlaps with legal stuff. For example, mm -hmm. you're going to write about maybe the Americans with Disabilities Act. So given that, like, how, how do you cite that? And what's sort of a, a easy enough uh, way for people to understand how to do that? Also, we want the APA style standards to stay current with publishing practices. So we're often looking to APA journals and what standards they're following that are new things that have happened since the publication manual published. Um, so for example, we recently added a, 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 a page on the APA style site about open science that talks about how the APA style journal article reporting standards encourage transparency in reporting and how that aligns with the APA journal support for um, a different set of guidelines, the transparency and openness promotion guidelines and other standards that have been developed and have, the, have maybe evolved since the uh, publication manual first published. Right, because the practical thing that's happening in that scenario is like authors are putting their full data set in an online repository. Right. And then maybe you want to go do a meta analysis and like you can go get their data and it's 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 so much easier to access things now that it's all on the internet. Mm -hmm. So we're being responsive to that. Yeah. Yeah. That's, that's interesting. And in terms of like how the, the, the questions and comments that come in from the various, you know, constituents, um, how are you collecting those and, and sort of, sort of upvoting them or whatever you do to sort of um, establish, you know, importance to these, these questions? Like how, how is that all organized and kept track of internally? Yeah, well, so we have we get about three hundred emails a month, uh, uh, roughly, and then also social media and phone calls and uh, any way people can get to us. So right. we do collect them in. Uh, there's some software we use that lets us tag it and um, otherwise categorize things. And so then we look at the trends over. You know, most of the. I was just looking at this. Uh, uh, about fifty-five percent of the questions are about references, and then another twelve to fifteen are about in-text citations. So that's like a, we know that's the focus of what people are really writing us with questions about. But mm -hmm. um, so that's sort of the the collection process, um, and then we just look for trends. Yeah. And then some of them you can answer right away and some of them you might save for later that that might have something to do with like a, a, an update to, to, the, to the guy, correct? Right. Exactly. Yeah. Excellent. Yeah. And an additional consideration in terms of uh, feedback from the community of users, which really like we're the American Psychological Association, but people around the whole world use APA style. Like we regularly hear from people who are in New Zealand and Australia and all the continents are, are, <laughs> are coming and maybe not Antarctica, but, <laughs> uh, but the point is like, we're really trying to take people's experiences to heart. Mm -hmm. And if they're writing to us and they're so confused and they're so frustrated, like we, we don't want that. We want APA style to be easy to use. We mm -hmm. want it to be helpful. We want it to contribute to 
clarity, precision, and inclusion. And so we're alongside answering, thinking about how can we better explain the principles that are at work and apply them to today's society so that people feel like APA style in the APA style team is, is helping them. Because one of APA's goals as an organization is to use psychological science to improve people's lives. Like we're trying to do that in APA style too, to keep adapting and being useful because being able to write is such an important skill, it shows your critical thinking, it's creating a record. And like we mentioned before, like APA styles for everyone. And we want to show that we're, we're all on the same side. We want to help you. And I, I think we made a lot of good strides when we did the seventh edition. And I really hope that we continue in that in that direction and it's it's not just uh students um and instructors either we i mean people are searching the internet for a grammar question and they land on our site and we, and we help them as well so yeah i i get messages from my friends they're like i was looking up how to use a comma and there you were <laughs> <laughs> that's really good seo right there <laughs> um, excellent. Well, Tim and Chelsea, that's all the time we have. Thank you so much for joining us on the program. Thank you. Thank you so much for having us. You just heard from Chelsea Lee and Timothy McAdoo. Chelsea is instructional lead at APA Style and Timothy is manager. This series is brought to you with support from APA Style. As always, underwriting opportunities for the Authority File podcast are directed by Choices Advertising Manager Pam Marino, and all of our episodes are produced and edited by Choices Digital Media Producer Sabrina Kofer, with support from Digital Media Assistant Ashley Roy. That's all for this week. Thanks for joining us.